us talking at length, but we could kind of have a conversation. And if there are questions, um, I hope that you'll ask them. At the end, if you don't ask them, Liz will shoot me <laughs> with the mulch gun. She, I mean, it's funny, but really, look at her. She's not around. <laughs> um, so think about questions. But I'll, I'll give a brief kind of overview of the project. Um, so um, Liz and I kind of became interested, I'd say, well, we've been kind of circling similar themes for a while. Um, both kind of coming from the CCAD grad program um, and in kind of respective years, and both really being interested in um, kind of landscape and the experience of landscape and driving and how that frames the experience of landscape, um, particularly um, from the perspective of kind of parents um, and women um, and the kind of landscape that is in a way generated by the way that um, we use cars in this culture. Um, so the kind of architecture and the way that your experience of it is directed um, through kind of urban planning and design. And so um, we kind of decided to collaborate and I'd say probably for the last year we've been working on this project and this exhibition was a great way for us to test out some of the ideas that we've been thinking about. Um, and it's really intended to be read as kind of one continuous landscape. Um, there are kind of, you know, these screens um, and uh, you know, obviously this mulch um, and, and the sound itself. At night, there were. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the screens on the windows, which at night you know, were visible from the outside, um, with the view that you would really kind of experience the exhibition and have it extend uh, beyond the gallery, um, and that there are visual echoes happening. So you see repeated textures, actions, materials, um, kind of. And those kind of bounce around as your eye kind of moves through and as you move through um, the landscape that we've created in here. Um. Uh, a, a question has been, you know, we both worked in video a lot before, but uh, we've had the why mulch question. Um, and we wanted to use, explore mulch as this new material and sculpturally, but it has a backstory and um, so Elena didn't know what mulch was until she came to the States and the, our middle lands here. And uh, it is, if you think about it, it is kind of ridiculous because, um, you know, why, why are we grinding up these trees to put them on the ground around the tree? You know, it's just ludicrous. So that was the starting point for that, but also as she was driving around, were you in Cleveland? I was in Cleveland Heights. Okay. Yeah, it's a very right. aggressive gardening regime that happens in Cleveland Heights. I'm sure it's like the same here. Where it's like every spring the mulch trucks comes out and there are like these mulch tubes that like burp and chug this mulch onto the ground and then the spring flowers are put in, which is the pansies, and then they all get ripped out and the summer flowers go in and everything is like covered with mulch again. And I think that, um, and it is so ubiquitous here, but it's not a material that I was familiar with because, you know, in the UK, things just don't grow with the kind of abandon that they grow here, and there just isn't the need for that kind of control. So I got interested in mulch as, firstly, just as this kind of material, this like agent of control, by which landscape is controlled. Control, control. Um, but also like the kind of quasi like military application of it. And that is kind of where the, the genesis for the mulch gun came from. This kind of like landscaping industrial complex idea. Um, and I think along the way then we've also became really interested in the material qualities of it. You know, like any other material that you could work with as an artist, it has its own kind of limitations and qualities that we are kind of interested in, in working with um, and continuing to work with as, as, we, as we keep going. Um, Oh, I'll talk about the sound. So um, there's a sound piece that comes out of the fake rock speakers that are in, throughout the mulch sculpture in both galleries. Yeah. yeah, so those kind of, that sound is um, a mixture of uh, invisible spaces like Target or Walmart or and these places that really don't occupy a place in the culture, at least not in high culture, but are still incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so even though it didn't we it didn't end up making a road movie per right. se, you'll notice that all the video is set in car oriented spaces. Right. There's a parking garage, this is a cul-de-sac and um, 
I think that pretty much everyone, yeah. Right. So I mixed in with those kind of lines of dialogue which we've kind of excerpted and re-recorded. There is music which is taken from a family road trip that I took with my family. Um, so we do listen to ODB in the car with the kids. It's not very appropriate. Um, so that's kind of it's kind of just layering of, of different um, dialogue and sound. And there's snippets of um, conversation that yeah. Aaron running. There's stuff that we taught. We had a road trip to Michigan. There's a line from that yeah. about lost time. Yeah. Right? So, mom thoughts. Mm -hmm. Could you describe kind of why some of the patterns with the mulch that you have laid it out in? Maybe? Sure. I mean, it's really just thinking about formally what would work in the space and trying to create relationships between these kind of messy, unruly piles and more groomed, uh, very kind of straight. I'm interested in that tension between something being really messy and having a straight edge at the same time. So I think that, you know, the mulch piles themselves are really an, exp an exploration of the material and the formal qualities of it. You know, the, it's, very, it's very simple. Yeah, so I think at this point, if people have questions, I'd love to hear them um, and not get shot. <laughs> We're shooting anyways. There's we'll a shoot them them by popular demand. We will all move to the other room. Everyone will like, press back against the window, and we will shoot the wall. <laughs> because, <laughs> and yeah, hopefully not harm anyone. Or My question is, why does Elena have to be the one to get shot with the mulch gun? Because we've already seen that once. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's, my question. Yeah. That's um, a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> Liz built the mulch <laughs> no. um, Well, I think she is a more willing. I'm really like quintessentially a behind the camera person, and this is making me really uncomfortable. <laughs> and it always does. And so I think um, she was willing to step into that kind of more central role of the performance and the videos and was more comfortable with that and um, yeah. that's just how the dynamic worked out. She did get to shoot me once but it didn't I was too far away. <laughs> Are we gonna save Elena today from being shot? What is the what is the thinking behind the mulch gun and like the why you built it as kind of oversized and mm -hmm. Uh, oh my, it's a giant palace, Lauren, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I can say that word for the kids, right? They don't know what it means. Um, you know, I mean, it, it is, <laughs> you know, there's an aspect of, uh, ma, you know, there is, we, uh, who is it that asked about the Michelle Grabner um, thing? Oh, Danielle. Yeah, about Danielle, Julian Norton, we had this conversation, or you two did, at the opening about, if this part of this was kind of a response to Michelle Grabner and the art mom, mom art criticism kind of debate that was going on, the New York Times critic. And there is, um, we did want to like kind of push into that, the idea of mom art and the idea that women with children can't be good artists because they don't have time, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we <laughs> so weaponized it. Good? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's, my, that's my answer. <laughs> the landscape, the landscape. <laughs> Yeah. Does it echo an actually existing object that? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. echoes it echoes the, a system for applying mulch mm -hmm. that I've kind of seen and documented and just thought that is so strange and it's so it's it's weaponistic. Like it looks, you know, it's a it's a thing that you when you see it happening, you're like, whoa, that is really kind of an aggressive application of landscaping material. <laughs> what is that about? You know, maybe there's nothing there, but to me it's just like it's fascinating to I don't to just kind of dig dig down on that a bit. Yeah. And this was the most effective way to kind of we couldn't make, you know, an industrial landscaping the burper that comes out of the ribbed tube. rubber right. thing. So this was the most kind of efficient way we felt to still think about this idea of a weapon but also have something that, that worked, you know? So. It sounded like you brought up this mom art and that there was uh, a big, was there an article or? <laughs> there was an article in the New York Times and I actually forget the critic's name, but he's known for writing very kind of dismissive reviews, particularly on art by women and artists of color. 
Um, and it was a rebuttal to her exhibition in, in New York, which came after the big retrospective of her work. I'm Michelle Grabner. Michelle Grabner. Grabner. G R A B. She's a, she um, curated a Whitney Biennial last year. Right. She's, a, she's in she, Chicago. Yeah, she teaches at SAIC. Yeah. But she's interesting as just a person who's kind of operating outside of an art world center, like lives in the suburbs albeit an incredibly like beautiful suburb of Chicago that's known for its like mid-century architecture. But all that aside, she's kind of, um, you know, she's a parent and also has this amazing career and has managed to, instead of like kind of silo all of those different parts to kind of think about them in a really holistic way. Um, and that's why she's interesting. But he dismissed her as a soccer mom. Like, oh, how dare you, like, soccer mom, you're so privileged. Well, and he also dismissed her art as being soccer mom art. Yeah, that it wasn't very interesting or deep. Anyway, not to derail it. So, uh, I'm going to go... Can you talk about the, the dueling shopping cart? Yeah, so I think this piece is just, you know, we're just, we're just riffing on these spaces and the potential for a different kinds of, like, how performative they are already. Like, if you think about the mall or the parking lot, is there, like, these stages that are set and really lit for performance, but it's a certain kind of performance. It's, like, leisure and shopping and family life, but in a very particular way. And so I think we're interested in just taking these moments where, like this experience, you've had this experience, but just like extending it so that it just becomes really absurd. Um, and, and just thinking about, you know, other ways of being in those spaces that aren't, you know, they're not necessarily confrontational, but they are kind of shifting slightly. And they're skewed. And this was the, um, when I talked to the Columbus Alive writer on the phone, he said, there's, and this is in the video on the window projection, so it's not on the monitor, but that um, there's a shot that's kind of like half asphalt and then like a horizon, and then that place, I think it's Dublin, Flanagan's, where people play volleyball right off the side of the road. And he said, I've driven by Flanagan's a million times. I've never thought about it like that and how just ridiculous that is, you know? So I felt like we got some aspects of that. See that highway construction, they have an even more monstrous machine that shoots the hay out after they put the seed down, and it's it's like a tank. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Yeah. But the, the the absurdity of creating these these artificial landscapes at times is quite something. It is interesting. Okay. Should we do it? Any other questions, or should we all go and? Possibly to endanger ourselves in the other way. Oh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do it. Well, that's Yeah, man. Ooh, that's going to be. I'll carry it, you turn it. Right? It's going to kick back this time, though. Is it? Twice as much. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay.
you go. Christmas <laughs> 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 <laughs>